The toolbar contains all of the tools available in Flash Professional. In this lesson, we'll have a look at the toolbar and provide an overview of the tool groupings within. So we're in the Essentials workspace right here. And in the Essentials workspace, the toolbar is on the very right-hand side. And it's one very skinny little column. You can actually grab the toolbar and it'll turn into what appears to be a regular panel, which we can then adjust however we wish. You'll notice, and it's very apparent from this perspective, that the toolbar is actually grouped into various uh, tool settings. So we have three main groups, and these have to do with the tools themselves up here. And then we have uh, color tools, so different swatches that we can pick from for stroke and fill. We're able to set stroke and fill to the default black and white or even swap the swatches between the two. And we also have here a number of different things that are actually dependent upon the tool selected up in this first area. So you can see as I am changing these tools things will either disappear from here or they will actually appear. So we have things like object drawing mode or being able to snap to objects. We can turn these things on and off as we wish. You can see for my brush tool here, I actually get a number of different things that have to do with the brushes, including brush size, brush shape, whether to use pressure and tilt if you're using something like an Intuos tablet from Wacom. So there are a number of options here with each particular tool. So that brings us to the first area, which is the primary focus of this overview, and that is the tools themselves. So let's move this over here, and I'll actually dock it back into its normal place in the Essentials workspace, which is over on the side here, as a collapsed set of icons, just like that. So going through the tools, we have the selection tool, and the selection tool allows us to make selections upon the stage. So as I select different objects, we can see that I'm able to change all of their properties or interact with them in other ways. We also have the sub-selection tool. If I choose this tool and then go in and select a particular shape here, we can see that we can actually modify this shape somewhat by choosing the different points on the shape and actually moving those anchor points around the stage. So a subselection tool can be used on shapes in that way. We also have the free transform tool. This allows us to select something on the stage and then perform a variety of different transforms upon it. So for instance, we can rotate by hovering our cursor over any of the corners until it turns into a little rotation cursor. And that allows us to rotate. We can skew, and you can see my cursor change to sort of like these two little arrows here. That allows us to skew on any axis we wish. We can move the transform point so when we move the transform point, that is going to affect all our transforms. So you can see here, I've got it up in the upper left-hand corner. So now when I rotate, instead of rotating around the center, it actually rotates around that corner. So wherever I move that, it's almost like it's pinning the transform to a specific point. And then we also have some basic scaling that we can perform on this object. Grouped within the free transform tool area, is also the gradient transform tool. And to get to that, we simply need to hold down our mouse button on the tool and then select a new one. Any of the tools that have this little black arrow in the corner, you're actually able to do that too. So if I select a shape that has a gradient on it, like this sky here, I get these gradient transform tool elements where I'm able to shift my, the scale of my gradient. I'm able to rotate my gradient 
and displace my gradient across the stage. The next tool here, we have the 3D rotation tool and also the 3D translation tool. These both have to do with selecting movie clips and then transforming them around the X, Y, and Z axes. So we can see as I roll over, the cursor changes to display which particular axis we're actually working on. And let's actually toggle these hills off so we can see a bit better what's happening here. So here I'm transforming along the X axis and the Y axis and then here the Z axis. So any 3D transforms that happen in a Flash Professional CS6, it isn't real 3D, it's, it's known as like 2.5D or postcards in space, but it's still very useful to work with. You can get some interesting effects. So I just switched to the 3D translation tool here. And with that, we're able to translate along these different axes. So we can see how that works. Okay. This next one is the lasso tool. And when I choose the lasso tool, it allows me to do a number of different things. I can, for instance, make a oddly shaped selection on a basic shape. And let's just lock down some of these layers here. So something else I can do is make precise selections of different objects on the stage. So maybe I only want to select the sun. So I draw a lasso selection around that, and the sun is selected. Maybe I want to only select this text field here, and that works too. If I want to select both, that's not a problem either. The next tool is the pen tool, and this comes along with the add anchor point, delete anchor point, and convert anchor point tools. And using these tools, we can create shapes made up of anchor points along paths. So as you see right here, I've made sort of this circle path here. And if I choose to add anchor points, I can do that simply by clicking along the path. And I can also delete anchor points or convert specific anchor points from more of an angle to something with these little handles that we can adjust. The next tool is the text tool. And for the text tool, I can either click on the stage and begin typing out text, or I can drag a text field across the stage and begin typing out. We can also resize the text area based on this. Any text that already exists, we can of course edit using this tool. We have our line tool. And this allows us to create a line. We can specify the stroke here and so forth. And it's basically from one point to another. We have specific elements that are created and they're strokes made out of straight line. Next, we have a series of tools that have to do with the creation of shapes. We have the rectangle tool, oval tool, rectangle primitive and oval primitive tools, and also the polystar tool. So when I create a rectangle, I basically click and drag to create that. And we can see here that the stroke settings that we have right now are rather large, They're creating a 62 point stroke. So let's take that down to somewhere around four. And this creates a basic rectangle shape for me. We can also go in and create ovals. And if we create rectangle primitives or oval primitives, you can see here, if I use the selection tool, that there's a difference between when I select a basic rectangle and a rectangle primitive. With a rectangle primitive, I can actually control the corners. So the, all the radii of, of my corners here can be modified. With the actual basic rectangle shape tool, I can't do that. It's stuck as it is. But this one gives me a little more option later on. We also have the polystar tool. And with the polystar tool, 
if we click options here, we're able to create either polygons or stars. So let's say we're going to create a five sided star. So as I drag this out, there's our star. We also have a number of freeform tools here. We have the pencil tool, which allows us to create a freeform stroke, and then the brush tool, which creates a freeform fill for us. And you can see it's taken on the stroke or fill color, depending on which one we're using. We can also use the spray brush tool. And the spray brush tool works along with symbols that we have in our library. And the only thing I have right now is the sun here. So let's scroll over to another area of the pasteboard. And you can see as I spray, I've actually got my, my sun coming out here. And we can scale that if we want to. We can choose random scaling, random rotation. So you can create some interesting little effects using this particular tool. Next we have something that sort of behaves in a similar way, which is the deco tool. And the deco tool allows us to use a variety of drawing effects, such as vine fill, grid fill, etc. And we do that just by choosing one of these. And for some of them, we need to actually assign symbols to each of these. So for leaf, we need a symbol. For flower, we need a symbol, and so forth. So I don't have enough symbols in my library for that, but I can do things such as use the flame brush. You can specify flame size and choose a color. And then when we draw this out, you can see it creates a deco pattern for us. So there are a number of these. I'm not gonna go through all of them here, but they're actually quite interesting. So here's the tree brush where we can create trees based on these patterns and so forth. So some really fun things to play around with there. We also have inverse kinematics tools right below this. So that includes the bone and bind tool. So if I wanted to create something with the bone tool, we're going to create a basic uh, rectangular shape here. So what we'll do is create a new layer down in the timeline and then draw out this basic shape. Now we're able to select the bone tool and go through and draw out these various bone segments. Once these are drawn out, we can actually use our selection tool to grab any of these joints and we're able to use this as an armature. You can see we have an armature layer that's been created from the layer that we had initially built this particular shape upon. So you can use this as a skeleton for things like a figure or cranes or anything that you know would benefit from some sort of underlying structure to animate against. We have the paint bucket tool. So this allows us to go in and dump another color and I've got to select the correct layer here. So maybe I'll just do this with the uh, hills. So I can dump this magenta color into there and it will fill my, my fill with that particular color. In a similar fashion, we can use the ink bottle tool to create strokes very quickly upon different objects. So there I created a white stroke upon that hill object. We have the eyedropper tool that allows us to pick different colors. And the eraser tool. So the eraser tool, I can use that to, of course, erase portions of my image. And this is going to erase any of the content on this particular layer. So we can see the stage right through there. We then have the hand tool, which allows us to move around. And the zoom tool, where we can drag out a zoom selection, or simply click to zoom in. If we hold down Alt, you'll notice that we can actually zoom out as well. And then we have the basic swatch tools that, that I've already mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. 
So this has been a quick overview of many of the tools available to us in Flash Professional CS6.